Gone? There you go. We're live. Right, we're good. We're good. So, all right. So we got a little echo in there, Rory, too. We got an extra special episode today. I'm really excited. It's rare that we get a man in here of this caliber, as sexy as he is. We're going to talk about things not necessarily shooting. He's got a, a budding modeling career. I'm super excited to have him. We've been friends a long time, and we share a lot of mutual friends, and we always have laughs when we hang out and have a good time. We have the one and only JJ Ricasa, <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna get we're gonna get deep into it right away. We're gonna talk about it. When did the male modeling start? <laughs> <laughs> that started in college. Let's not let's not judge. Now, was it underwear right away, or was it was it mainly uh, clothing, or was it bags? How did you start? You start out with clothes, and you get desynthesized throughout the years, and then you know more skin and more skin, and then tighter and tighter, and so yeah, now I'm stuck with that. So, <laughs> so the JJ Ricasa male model thing is actually kind of an inside joke, but it's 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 funny as hell. But uh, he is as smooth as you see him on social media. <laughs> Media, everybody, um, he he's one of a kind, and he has personality for days that oozes out. But he's doing something with his social media right now that I think is really fucking cool, and I want to talk about that. He's doing tons. Of, he, he's been doing tons of dry fire, and everybody's seen that. But he's given us a little insight into how much prep he takes with the gunsmithing, with the care, and with everything else. And I want to dive right into that, JJ, right away, because um, you were talking a little bit about some of the new stuff you got going on. I know you're going to get into that, but. How important is it for you with, with not only your customers, but with your own personal um, uh, uh, pistols you use, you spend so much time gunsmithing this stuff. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it's, always, it's always a lot about the product, right? The, 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 the tool that you're gonna use out there, how good it's gonna be. So tweaking it only improves your timing. And when your timing is really good, you can't blame the gun. If the gun runs really smoothly, you can't blame the gun. It's only up to you. And when it's up to you, it's really cool because it's, it's kind of easy, right? Um, all the cars are already on deck. Everything's perfect. And then now you just have to keep up with the gun. So with me being able to tune a lot of these guns for my customers and students and all that stuff, it also enhances my ability and knowledge in terms of what to look for, what makes it better for me. The good thing about at least a little bit of an advantage when most guys are trying to get their guns tuned by me is that I tune these guns the way I would like the gun to shoot for me in competition. So this is what I want to get into. So the tuning, how many guns out there do you look at and you're like, this is a total piece of shit? How much are you advising people from the start? And I know you don't want to get into it. JJ's a class act. Let me let me button this up a little before he talks because JJ will tell you all the right things you want to hear, people. He's going to say everything right. But how many? How often are you saying, nah, don't buy that, buy this? All, yeah. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> there are stuff, right? A lot of it comes down to preference, and um, it comes down to opinion and all that stuff, and what your purpose and what you use behind the gun. There are guns out there that I go, hey, if this is going to be your purpose, let's just say you're going to depend your life on it, I wouldn't go with that gun. Or if you're going to compete and try to win a match with it, I wouldn't go with that gun. I'd rather you go with this How gun. often? All the time. All the time. <laughs> so you're looking at a lot of the products out there, and you you're you have a good sense of what's coming out. Give me, um, you know, kind of off the top of your head, somebody's thinking of getting into competitive shooting. What are three brands out of the box people should pay attention to? I know one you're going to say. Sure. One of the number one gun right now that's very new that hasn't um, been around yet, or at least in the U.S. side, is a new Beretta, the 92X. Mm -hmm. Um, the second gun is um, obviously CZs mm -hmm. for competition. That's really good. Uh, that's a really good gun. The Shadow too, and I think CZ Customs also coming up with their A01 Bull Shadows. Those are nice as well. Um, and then the Tanfoglios, the Stock Twos, I know you Stock mean, Threes. Know, yeah. yeah, those guns are all steel frame guns. Um, they're a little bit one-sided. They're in terms of the competition scene. Steel frame kind of prevails a little bit because of the trigger mechanism and all that stuff and recoil. But there's also another side, which is the polymer side of it. And, you know, the standard Glock is pretty good. Uh, Who else uh, you got on the polymer side? I got Glock high always. But. Yeah, Glock's pretty good for high. There was, there was a couple more. Um, like, let's say FN was good for a little bit. And they had, they had this pistol. I don't even remember the pistol uh, model anymore, but they kind of faded out. Um, really, one of the other guns that um, for 
th that's kind of new too is um and i don't know if it's legal in the usa uh, but it's legal internationally is laugo arms their alien gun it's like five thousand dollars i just got to <laughs> test that gun recently i don't know if they can call that production line type gun but it's amazing let me back this up because you're, you're a gun snob so <laughs> <laughs> let me back this up so if there's if, if, if somebody out there doesn't have three or five thousand dollars to spend and they're just let's back it up for the lay person just getting into competitive shooting a glock obviously would be the logical glock uh, or the new the, the older czspo ones okay those stand out around 700 so you touched on Beretta. I know this is all new and fresh, but people who follow you have seen it. You've posted, you know, pictures from from Beretta on your IG. If Rory, you want to pull up his JJ's IG where we get some of those those cool modeling photos. <laughs> um, talk a little bit about the Beretta thing because I know you're excited about it. Yeah, um, I had the opportunity when I went to um, Extreme Euro or at least Prague Czech Czechos Republic. Um, when I went to go compete over there. Um, I had opportunity to test the guns, and really the gun blew me away. Um, mm. The trigger mechanism that they've done on that gun, their lead technical engineer, um, made a huge improvement in terms of the way the trigger bar met with the um, sear and essentially getting rid of the disconnector altogether. And it made the trigger reset like a 1911, 2011 style, which a lot of the guns, when you're shooting, it's all about... One, the break of the gun, the trigger, in terms of how clean it breaks, not a rolling trigger, and that's why I don't like some of the polymer frame style guns or striker fire guns. Um, I'm more of a 1911 style, so this one breaks cleanly, and not only does it break cleanly, but it resets like a 1911 style gun. So that alone right there makes it a very competitive gun. And then, you know, all I had to do then after that was check the accuracy, and goodness gracious, it's more accurate than I, mm. so <laughs> I was good with that. And, and obviously, you're, you're super excited to work with them. You, you were chewing our ear off for the last half hour, selling us on them. And, and that's, you know, that's a testament to who you are. And you go through the process, I know, way longer than I would. You know, it, you're, you're digging deep into the brand and everything they're about. And that's, that's super, super important to you. How, what drew you to Beretta initially, and how did you, how did you kind of get it on your radar? Where was the first? And don't lie, because I heard you out there. I heard you on the phone. What drew you to the brand initially as a child? So it started out with uh, the movie Lethal Weapon. Of course it did. Right? Um, I think it was Lieutenant Briggs, correct? Riggs. Martin Riggs. Riggs, Riggs. Riggs. Martin Riggs. That's right. Um, I, I got to watch that show again. Um, Lieutenant Riggs, or I think it is Lieutenant. Detective. Uh, he, detective. I think it was Detective. Martin Riggs. Right? Riggs um, had this gun and then, <laughs> man, it was a 92, or I think it was an M9, but 92 FS basically type style gun and i fell in love with the look and the aesthetics of it uh, i don't know what it was. it was i think it was the missing top end it looked like a race car um with the with the barrel sticking out a little bit and it was just a sexy gun to me absolutely enjoyed it loved it and then i had to get one that was actually one of the first ones that i got young jj affected by the movies he was sold on the marketing <laughs> so you know you watch lieutenant riggs detective rigs and lethal weapon and you're like that stays in your brain it burns a hole in your brain and you go through this tremendous journey world champ all these different things and everybody knows your competitive history and, and what you're about and you somehow end up almost it feels like back home yeah with beretta it's got to feel that way it it it, it, and it gives me goosebumps even yeah i, I mean now. it has to feel um, that way it all started with just a fascination and that 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 thing uh oh it's look it's in a movie and i want that gun and and then now i actually I, I'm, I'm working with the company, and I shoot for the company, um, and I'll be—I'll have that opportunity to actually represent the gun that I've always loved since I was a kid. You know, it's kind of one of those things that now—now now it's kind of—it's a huge project because Beretta decided to get back into focus with their pistol. Um, a lot of guys right now are saying Beretta, what do they what pistol model do they have, and all that stuff, and now. They're actually trying to get back into the scene, which is cool. And I—I mean, I'm, I would love and. And it's enjoying this part of this whole process. process. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any way, Rory, we could pull up a picture of, of Martin Riggs and then superimpose JJ's head <laughs> on it? I think he'd look good with a mullet. But if we, if we can pull up a Lethal Weapon poster, maybe we can give him more goosebumps. But yeah, I mean, that has to be super, super exciting. And I'm happy for you. I'm genuinely happy for you. Uh, because you seem genuinely happy with the deal. So I'm looking forward to a super bright future with, with you and Beretta. I think that's going to be a, a home run. I think you're going to crush it. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And I know you're getting it all dialed in. And you were talking about working with the team there and, and going to make it, you know, uh, one of those things that's, uh, how do I say it, um, 
JJ'd. You're gonna get it all <laughs> JJ'd up. So when you when can people expect to see you running this gun in competition? Uh, they got the approval to import it or export it here into the U.S. and we are expecting me to get the first shipment of the guns in September. But it's very soon and I can't wait. And one of the big things I want to mention is that signing with a big company is just, it's one of those things, right? It's, a, it's an honor, it's humbling, and it's cool. But really the big thing for me is I have to be able to see the potential to perform behind the gun because signing with a company, as big as they are, it doesn't matter who it is. If you can't perform with the gun at the level that you want to perform, then ultimately it's a dead contract. Um, right. It can't just be about that. It has to be the all together, the whole package of the gun being able to perform with me and me being able to perform with the gun. So and that was a big thing with me that they actually did the right thing with this gun. <laughs> and I was blown away. And that's why I ended up signing with them. And, you know, you, we talk a lot, you know, about contracts and trying to understand where guys are at. What advice do you give to the younger shooters out there that, you know, everybody now sponsor crazy, you know, I think it's part of like Instagram, everything else. People like you, Tony, certain people that I've talked, Max is another one. You guys are very patient with your deals and you take time with your deals. And that's something I've learned over time, consulting everything else. It, you have to kind of teach these young guys, you know, everybody's so quick to be like, uh, you know, here's a free optic. And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm sponsored. You know what I mean? Um, how? What advice would you give people to be patient? I mean, how do you, especially as they get into the pro shooting market? I mean, does it drive you nuts seeing some of these people? Or I want to tell them, depending on what route they go, there's you know there's a Tony route. I mean, Tony's a maniac and he's out there training the law enforcement, military, and he's got a perfect niche for that. And he looks the part. He's a f he's a poster. He's an animal. Yeah. yeah. Um, you take a picture with him, it's an instant hit, right? Yeah. Um, and then, and then there's the competition side of things also. And the competition side of things is also very, very niche, uh, very small percentage, yeah. basically, small community that that gets and makes it makes a living out of it. Um, I'm very fortunate. I don't know how it came up, but I could tell you, if there's a young guy out there trying to get into the pro shooting world, first thing I tell him is not to focus on the sponsorship. I never did, never have. Um, it's only recent that it's starting to come around, which is crazy, 26 years later. Um, and it's just starting to happen now, but I was never focused on it. I was just being, I just wanted to be the best I can be in terms of shooting. And it was all about the chase for that goal, the chase for the best technique and the application of it and being able to execute at the right time at the right moment. And with those goals in mind, it led me to this point where now I'm getting hired, trained uh, military, I'm getting, I get contracts now, offers from left and right and different companies and stuff like that. And I have to be careful on what, who I join with and link up. Oh, with. sure. You're, you know, at this point, you're a brand name. You have the gold to go with it. And, and I literally mean that. You have the cachet. And Jay Cutler was talking about that a little bit. When you're a champion, you, it carries weight. So you have to really be careful and go through the process. And, you know, like we were joking out in the hall, the firearms industry is really interesting. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, this isn't downing any one company. There's a lot of people out there that have the misconception. They'll give you like a muzzle break and they're like oh we're working with jj it's like that's not uh, you know and that's that's changing the good thing is that's changing i think that was a derivative of instagram and that kind of quick social media that's not a partnership you get into true partnership where you're going out to the facility you're working with the manufacturer you're getting knuckle deep you're getting knee deep in all of this and kind of really digging and kind of seeing how the company is and obviously beretta has a long rich history but you're literally standing next to the cnc machine and you're trying the stuff out i mean literally and that's that's where i think you know the the lay person that's like hey i got a free pair of oakley's they're kind of lost you know it, it's that's not sponsorship you know anytime i work with a brand now i'm like well i have to fly out i got to see your facility i'm gonna have to walk around i'm gonna have to tour it i'm gonna have to get an idea of kind of how you guys do business and who you do business with and that's kind of something that has become more and more important to me over time it's no longer hey you know here work with this brand work with that brand yeah. and that's something i know you go through painstakingly um Good question just came in, and it's it's a really good one. I was going to ask this anyway. What has been the biggest achievement for you in the firearms business? Top shot deals, championship, what? Uh, it's, it's 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 hard, right? Um, that question is always so tough for me because it's it's. Uh, I have this mentality. I think my dad ingrained it to me a long time ago. Is that you're only as good as your last shot fired. So if your last shot was a miss, you were that good. That's as good as you were going to get. So. For me, one of my my biggest accomplishment has always been like the world titles, the national titles. It's always been something that I never even, as a kid, never even dreamt of possibly winning. 
and then it became a reality once I almost won the nationals in uh, early 2000s, 2001, I believe. Um, and then that's when I started believing that well, I can actually win this. Yeah. Right? So every time I've won a national title, a world title, or whatever, it was one of those things that made me more nervous. And and I would enjoy the moment at that time where I would sit there and stand in front of the podium or whatever in front of a lot of people, and then enjoy it. But as soon as that celebration is done, the next, even that night, I, I would sit there and just stare at the trophy and I want to hide it because I don't want to keep rem reminiscing about that. I want to move forward and see what's the next thing for me now. Um, I have to train for the next thing. That means the bullseye just got bigger in my back. Oh, like, of course. You know, like last year, I just won, I won two national titles in one week. Almost won three, uh, which was a huge accomplishment for me and I think for anyone in the shooting industry. In, in terms of competition, and as soon as I won that, I, I went home to the hotel and I dry fired, and I just wanted to, to know that I was one step ahead of in front of everyone that I was competing against, because I, I know that the bullseye now just got bigger. And, and I know you do a good job giving people a sneak peek into your life, and they see that, the dry fire, the extra work, but I think, do you think now, and I believe this, whether it's you, Shane, certain people, People don't understand really how much work it is. They're starting to because you guys are all giving them some insight into the weightlifting, the training, the stuff that goes on all around it, that the days of like, you know, being 300 pounds and, well, Taryn keeps it alive, <laughs> but, 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 you know, kind of coming on the range and not having your, you know, everything dialed in, those days are over. I mean, are they over, JJ? Unless you have exceptional over. talent. I, would, yeah, I wouldn't say they're over, right? Um, but... The gap's closing. I wouldn't. I don't take you seriously um, as a competitor. So if I don't take you seriously, you're not existing in my head. If you're not existing in my head, you're no. You're not relative to me. So when I compete, I don't even think about you because I know one way or another, either you're gonna get tired, you're gonna fade out, and you're not gonna execute movement correctly, and you're gonna waste time here or there. But with that said, there are really some good competitors that are not in the best of shape that are competing. But if you want to be at the top level. You have to hit every single aspect. Like you said, it everything has to be right. There's so much work that that that, that, that is done. And there's a reason why I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning because I feel like there's just well, I was gonna, not enough time. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Now, I, I asked Jay this. I said, how do you personally stay dialed in like after you win the first Olympia, the second Olympia? And I ask champions this all the time. Uh, he used to say he used to just look in the mirror and say, who am I? You know what I mean? And that was powerful enough for him when he didn't want to go to the gym, when he didn't want to train. You know, he used to say, who am I? And it, it, he answered his question every time he looked in the mirror and he got his shit together and went out the door. It, it, what process do you go through? I mean, do you wear like that? Do you have a hypnotist? Do you wear the halo ear things? Do you wear, like what, What's the process that you go through to kind of keep yourself dialed in and focused? So it used to be all about me. Um, it used to be, hey, let's, you know, I just want to be the best me possible. Mm -hmm. And if I can find a new 100% today, that was a that was a, a win. Um, recently, really within the last six years, it's changed quite a bit. It's a lot of it's about my kids and my family. I look at them and I'm like, golly, it's like I don't ever want to come home disappointing them. Like my little boy, recently, every time I come home with a trophy, immediately he grabs it from my bag and runs it up to his room and he puts it in his room. So I used to just put that all in a garbage can. I'm not garbage can in a, in a garbage plastic bag or whatever and stash it in a garage. I don't even in my house. You don't see any trophies at all. Not even world championships or anything like that. It's just put aside because I don't want to see them and I don't want to keep reminding myself of that. I, my fear is. It's, it's weird, right? It's like I have this healthy sense of fear of losing or not performing right because everything is like tied into that. And my dad used to joke around, winning's not everything, but it's the only thing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, there's, there's absolute, that, that's the harsh truth, right? And there's absolute truth to that. I, I, I think, you you know, in today's day and age, what's lost is kind of the, the that absolute, like you can lose and you can win. Yeah. And I think I think our generation is kind of the last generation that truly understands that. I think if you're 35 and under, you may not fully grasp that because, it, we, you know, I don't, I don't like to say the pussification of America. I, I like to say, you know, we're kind of in a, everybody's a winner, you know, t kind of kind of place. I think I think Trump's doing a good job kind of rolling that back a little bit. But I think it's important to lose. I think it's important to have those those moments, like you said, where you stare and you see somebody else at the podium. And, and it makes you go back, like you said, even as a winner, you went back and you dry fired and, and it makes you better. And I, 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 I believe it's important to lose. I'm getting nervous right now talking about it. You, you gave me this. I'm a very big visual 
person and you gave me a visual in my head of someone else standing in, the, in that podium and i just got super nervous just now yeah like, and holy you, and i need it, to go train you go train right now you need it you know <laughs> you brought up a good point though the family and, and your little boy that's important i mean i've heard tom brady say similar things they said why do you want to keep going in championships he said because my kids are starting to understand and he's you know what i mean he, and that like kind of hit me and i don't have kids but i understood what he was saying you know, because after the Super Bowl, it's the first thing you see, those iconic images of them holding their kids and everything. And they, he said, my, my, my kid, I want all my kids to remember one of my championships. Yeah. And that was fucking profound when he yeah. said that. He said it somewhere on one of the NFL Films things. And that stuck with me. You know, he's like, that's what fuels me now later in my career because he doesn't need to win another Super Bowl. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, everybody says the same thing, and I stole the line from him. The, the sweetest championship's always the next one, right? Oh, yes. Always. Yes. So, you know, like you said, you're, all, you're only worth your, your last shot. I say the, the best things, the, you know, the best championship's going to be the next one. So, um, you know, a few people have said, yeah, the formula for success is you got to put the work in, and that's been written a hundred times. We, we, we all get that. Give the folks an idea. We've talked about this. We talked about this in the back of a – I was in the back of a, a taxi with Tony, and we were having a conversation. You know, you might have been there. It was around the time we were, you know, we were in your car maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and we were talking about how many rounds get fired downrange. I know you say you're very under what you see guys do, like Max and other folks. Give, an, give the folks an idea of how many rounds pro shooters are putting downrange a month. Um, I'm a pro shooter. Uh, I'm going to say I put down a month about three, A heavy training month. Recently, um, heavy training months, about two to 3,000 rounds a month. Um, in regards to other guys that I know, Eric Rafael, I think Shane is one of those guys. Um, Max is another guy. This other new kid, he's awesome. Christian Saylor and Austin Harris. These are all good juniors and top shooters. They're putting down five, easily 10,000 rounds a month. I say that to people, and they look at me blown away when people talk to me about shooting. I'm like, if you want to get good, yeah, you can put 500 to 1,000 downrange a month. You'll get good. Sure. You'll get proficient. You'll probably be one of the better shooters at your local range. But if you want to get to that top level, you better start with 3,000 or better, you know, just to, just to kind of get in the game. Y or, or do you have to supplement it with other things? Because um, I was broke in college. I, <laughs> I, was just, I met a kid um, at the range yesterday. I was testing out some of the guns that I tuned, and he's coming into the, the police on for uh, – uh, law enforcement world and he's just getting hired he's going through his background check and he asked me how can i get good with shooting i said hey man just do a lot of reps because i don't have a lot i don't have a lot of money i said you know what i remember when i was broke i said all i did was i dry fired my butt off yeah i dry fired for an hour two hours every day and so, then that's all i did so supplement those numbers with dry fire yeah you know because when i was broke i shot maybe average of about eight thousand rounds a year that was it that's crazy yeah and probably you probably did Fifteen to twenty thousand dry fires. I would no. I remember those days. I would dry fire for over three hundred thirty plus days a year. Now I'm down to about three hundred plus days, give or take. Um, do a, a lot of travels, but I don't miss much um, in terms of dry fire sessions. My and hands look like I shoot a lot, but I don't. And how many how many pulls are you taking when you dry fire? Two hundred. Uh, no, I get I get right now. I average of about four hundred to six hundred draws a night, and about two to three hundred reloads per night. You hear that, everybody? Let that sink in. That's a lot of work. That's every a, night. That's every night. That's a ton of work. That's six days a week. Almost roughly. every night. Yeah, it's about yeah. six days yeah. a week. Yeah. You know, give or take, maybe five. But it, it's still a lot. That's a ton. So how, you know, one other thing about shooting, then we'll get off on, on some other topics, but I want people to understand this because the hardest thing is to understand the level when you put it into context. How tight and how separated are the top five shooters like it, it's difference of Oof. fractions right yeah i mean point ones literally yeah how would you describe how tight it is at those top levels it, uh a pickup shot on a paper let's say 30 rounds on 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 a 30 round field course and you throw a pickup shot on a plate and that would be the difference between winning that stage or losing that stage that's how tight it is so to give you guys an idea, because I, you know, I get asked these questions, and it's way out of my realm when people ask me them. It's way out of my scope. It's not it's the term lane. It's not even in my highway. Um, I get out there and I train quite a bit with some savages, but this is this is totally his territory. It's fractions. It is fractions, and it's the same in any sport, and it's the same in pro shooting. It's it's literally fractions. Now, 
You've done a fantastic job. You're going to crush it. I'm super pumped to have you in the building, and I got to show you some of the stuff here um, at Arsenal and some of the stuff we're working on here in KVAR. Uh, what do you think of the facility and meeting some of the folks and kind of seeing some of the shotguns and the, and the AKs? Man, this facility is super clean. Uh, it's pretty neat that it's right around my co the corner for my shop. We're neighbors. Um, I can throw a rock and I can hit your mm -hmm. building. Um, the guns are pretty cool. Um, I'm not very familiar with the um, AK platform, but I've played with it a couple times. Um, a couple of my guys in my shop are really familiar with them, and they're excited. I just sent them a text and said, hey, man, look, look at the guns that I'm playing with today. You guys will get to play with it next week, and they're all, they can't stop blowing up my phone already. Um, I, the guns look great. The, they look like some of the modifications you guys have done to some of the the, the shotgun specifically model. I, I could see where that could play into the market that we target, the competition market. Absolutely. No, we're pumped to have you, and, and to just have you stop in and say hi is, is always a pleasure, so we thank you for that. Now, let's get to more pressing news. This is what it's all about. Are you willing to lead the charge to Area 51? All that training I've done, I think, has led me to that point. It's, this, is the, this is the big decision. So this is, this is our home now. Are you willing to defend our soil? And find the aliens. Shit. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> the, the, this team needs a commander. There's 1.2 need... million people signed up for this to, to retake. No, wait. But that 1.2 million 1. is like the millennials signed up. <laughs> and run general, away after the first punch. Run <laughs> <laughs> away after And General Rakaza <laughs> could be in charge. They're looking, for, they're looking for leadership. If Tony's with me, I'm going. If Tony, all right, we're, Tony, <laughs> you get Tony, did you hear that? If Tony's with us, we're, we're all in. No, but where do you stand on the alien thing, and, and how funny is that 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 group? I I don't agree with them bombarding it. I worked for the <laughs> government for a long time, and anyone trying to take on our building was always a serious threat, and so it wouldn't go really well for any of those guys. But in terms of aliens and stuff like that, heck yeah, I believe in that. I'm a believer. I, I've watched those shows, UFOs. I was glued to History Channel for so long. I, I just want to know what he'd go looking for if he actually made it through the gates and everything. There's no gate. That's the funny <laughs> the, Made it through the desert, you know, avoiding There's, all the sensors. There's a gate? Freaking yeah, yes. At Area 51? There's sensors and gates. I did There's, like a ton of research. They said that... There's like it's like a hundred yards or two hundred yards of no gate, but where they can shoot you. Yes. You pass I was signage. Say, yes, correct. They can shoot you. Uh, within the facility, that's the buffer zone. And once you get to the facility, that is completely secured. They're already scrambling. The Air Force did a thing. They're already like, we're prepared to defend. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't. Now we all Drop are in agreement. In Vegas. If you could pull up the article, Roy, I, I we're all in agreement. I don't. I don't think it's gonna. I think it's gonna end up being a party in the desert, but. Um, <laughs> But getting back to to the that, that's what it's supposed to be now, John. Is it supposed to be just a big party in the desert? Everybody's talking about bringing drinks and snacks. Oh, and, then <laughs> you know, JJ the model might <laughs> <laughs> might stop by. I mean, we can put him on the back of a truck bed and put a pole up and you know yeah. get him dancing. I don't think Maybe we can make a couple bucks off him. I, I don't think. think he'll need a pole. I think he'll just do the damn thing. I think if we get him up there, you know, we can get him doing the macarena or something on the flatbed. I think he'll be we'd be all set. But <laughs> that goes out to how old we are, Michael. Right so yeah, I, oh my God. So, but in all seriousness, the the alien thing's hot right now. Are there little green men, and do you believe that they exist? Yes. Yes. In, in what form? And did like they take that right there? In, right? In, <laughs> <laughs> if we could show that picture, yeah. I, I, I mean, look at that just right there. I mean, the, the, they're just gonna host, you know, the the, the watch party for the store. <laughs> I mean, I was in literally. I was in Artesia, New Mexico, for training in the beginning of my career, right? And then right next to it is Roswell, New Mexico. Right. That whole town is unique by itself. I mean, you go there and ask a regular dude walking down the street whether it's a hobo or a successful businessman every single one of those person will tell you that they exist so but i i need to go deeper with you you can't just say yes there's aliens where are they and what are they doing for work <laughs> monetary i don't know what that is but i know they're <laughs> flying around in space they're flying around they gotta be there's gotta be better there's gotta be more than just human being we can't be the the, the smartest species there is there's gotta be other, I mean, the planet's so damn big. The galaxy's so damn big. Like, there's black holes that send you out of somewhere else. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, I, there's stuff out there 
that has come and touched and come close to us and going, what the hell is that? And they're probably like, let's not touch them because they got military and shit. Let's just go. So they leave us. And then we're probably thinking the same thing. Shit, they're trying to invade us. No, let's freaking stay here. I look at it more like this, JJ, being honest. And, I, you know, we got some, some very big answers the last few days from some high-profile people. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I look at it like this. I look at shit like the pyramids. And I look at shit like, you know, the Sphinx, and I look at like some of the stuff, and I'm like, there's no fucking way some Israelite carried that dirt on his back, or there was a pulley system. I, I look at stuff like that, like, excuse me, I look at the last hundred years in the growth of technology, and I'm like, there's just no way. Something's been reverse engineered. I mean, the cell phones, the stuff that we have now. I look at it that way now. Are they walking amongst us? Like, I got a report this <laughs> morning from from uh, a deep cover operative, a source, uh, inside the Monster Energy uh, team. I got a, I got a report that there's that they do walk amongst us. I, I don't know that that's true. Where do you stand on them walking amongst us? I, I think they're trying to stay away. Uh, for me, I stand on the side of they're trying to stay away from us as, far, as much as we are trying to. Well, I think we're more invading them. Uh, we should stop trying to explore and let them be because whatever it is out there is not us. And whatever is not us, I don't feel safe. And uh, I think whatever planes they got and ships they got is a little better than ours. Maybe they're a little bit more far into the technology world than us because they have different metals or whatever. But um, I, I don't think they're walking around or amongst us. I, I think that's a little too far-fetched. Do you have a source? Let me call the government real quick. He, he's got to admit, though, he's, he's got to want to get his hands on some of that alien gun technology, though. I mean, who I, wouldn't, you know? I'm still questioning whether or not he's human. I just want to put that in my car. I want to put that alien technology metal in my car. Like, here's my thing. I kick it, and then it'll unfold back. Like, that's... He, he, but here's my thing, JJ. In, in Rory, too, here's my thing. I don't think we stopped at the moon. I think that's like a cover story. Because there's no fucking way, hey, we got to the moon, and hey, we're just going to hold up here. Like, that's just not... Did you see that video that Buzz Aldrin said to the kid? What was it? The kid goes, hey, how is it walking on the moon? And he literally flat out tells him, goes, that didn't happen. What are you talking about? <laughs> Old Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> there's a video on Instagram or somewhere. You can pick a, uh, pull it out. He literally says, nope, that didn't freaking happen. No way. <laughs> I was like, what the no hell is this? Way. Has this guy gone senile? <laughs> like, no. No way. You know, and that just kind of feeds that um, conspiracy theories. It's like, this guy says this, and he was there, or supposedly he was there. I don't know. Well, that's <laughs> scary. So, I mean, do they walk amongst us? I don't think so. At least I hope not. Goodness gracious. I guess I, I'm with you on that. I hope not. Yeah. I guess it's a big I hope. it's I not hope. a tactic, but man. Yeah. Like, I hope they die with bullets, because I have plenty of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I... I don't know. I don't know. Like, color doesn't think they're little green men. Uh, it's scary. It's it. It really is. It's fucking frightening. I I've gotten so deep into this last couple of days that I spent like an hour watching a documentary on like the Mariana trenches and like what's buried in there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm worried like yeah. they're hiding in there, like they're under our feet or something. They, the water's got to be where it is. It's got to be yeah. right. That like that's the deep, deep like, trench. Yeah. You know, there's something down there. Then, then um. What someone explored that? Steven um, no, it was James Cameron. James did Cameron a, did a documentary on the Mariana Trench. I think he was the only one or one of the. Three, and they right? said every time. So, so if you guys want to be freaked out out there, they did these deep explorations like the last twenty years in the Mariana Trench, and it's like thirty thousand miles down. You could fit like fifty skyscrapers in it, and it's way down there. And they would send these like unmanned crafts. Oh yeah, there's the Buzz Aldrin thing. I don't know. I told you. Yeah. If you crazy. play that and he'll say it right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't video. know if we can. There's a copyright probably. <laughs> but they go deep. And every time they went deep, the submersible, two out of the three times didn't come back. And that's fucking scary to me. And nobody I talks didn't even about know that. that. Yeah. They said like the screen blacked out. And um, Rory, see if you can pull up the Mariana Get Trench. Get out of here. And, uh, and like the submersibles never came back. What? I'm serious. They said they think there's a megalodon down there. They think there's some type of creature down there. Yeah, I, I believe there's some sharks out there bigger than us. Yeah, absolutely. Do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? Speaking of this, <laughs> I don't know about the Loch Ness Monster. I think that's been oh. proven a hoax. Oh, okay. I, I don't I don't know about that, but I definitely think, especially in the Amazon and in, in the Mariana Trench, there's shit that we haven't seen yet. Especially in the water, for sure. Yeah. And it's definitely alien. Um, there's no doubt about it because we don't know about it. So they show like the submersibles go down and 
it, they don't make it back. James Cameron comp completes a record-breaking Mariana Trench dive. Yeah, he did the dive, and didn't the thing not make it back, Rory, or something? There's I'm not finding anything that says that it didn't make it back. But they know? recorded some weird shit. Yeah, I mean, they even found a plastic bag down there. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> don't frightening. Pollute, guys. Don't Keep pollute. Plastic. So recycle. What do you make of all this, like resurgence and conspiracy theories and everything that's kind of popping up, and why people are getting so caught up in it? Like the alien thing kind of died off. The alien thing? No, it died thing off died for a off. while. Oh, it did for a while. I guess. I guess the government had a lot to do with that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it died off up. for a while. Now <laughs> everybody's like enamored with it and digging into conspiracies, and everybody wants answers. It never died out with me. It was just, you know, one of those things that I wanted to just keep it buried because I didn't want to be the only freak out there believing that there's you. But now you can come out. I can come out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so liberating. J <laughs> JJ comes out about alien technology. <laughs> it's an exclusive. It's a dealer exclusive. Funny, yeah, I tested a gun that was called the Alien, and that that gun was amazing. So, this whole thing is pretty fucking wild. Um, but, let's not go off too far on that. It's it's a lot of fun talking about because we live in the area, too. So, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of cool, and it's a cool thing that's kind of hit the area. But, coming back, you know, kind of to, to the training and to everything else, you kind of go through your day, you know, a certain way and i know how busy you are uh let me ask you the same question i asked jay how do you make the time you talked about dry fire you talked about um weight training doing the physical fitness everything to stay on top of your game and having a family how do you make the time what's advice you give people in making the time you you, you make it you make that you do it I don't, I don't know if there's such a thing as there's no time. I think a lot of it's priority. Uh, there's when you do when you do so much. There's things gonna be bound to slip off, and I've come to um, the realization that I, I, I'm not gonna be good at everything. So I, there's things that like text messages, Instagram messages, or, or Facebook messages that I just can't get to because I'm trying to put my phone away once I get my kids. And when I'm, right. when I'm with them, I want to be completely present. You know, like we'll go and play in the pool. Let's go play in the pool. We go play in the yard. Let's play in the yard full bores out and once in a while my wife will catch some of these crazy videos that i'll do just to make a freaking laugh out of the kids you know it, you know i we we're talking about that too i've been talking about that with every guest i i think the instagram thing though is dying off i think it's moving more towards youtube i think i think instagram's kind of because even jay said he goes i have three million followers and he goes i look at the analytics maybe thirty thousand people see my shit I think Instagram, you're betting on how many times people want to swipe down. Sure. And I think our industry is so pot committed to Instagram. Everybody's like, Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. Too many, too many. But I think it's, yeah, too many companies, their whole marketing plan hinges on Instagram. Right. And, I mean, where do you stand on that? Because you're kind of coming into your own with social media. Do you? Because I think cable TV's dead. I don't have cable. Yeah, I think it's yeah. toast. Yeah. I think everybody's cutting the cord. I think our generation is gonna absolutely not going to pay 200 300 bucks for a cable package. It doesn't make sense. So I see YouTube, Netflix, streaming being the place to be. Um, what do you say to companies when they say Instagram ambassadors? I, oh. I can't. That's them. That's their talk. I can't, I can't do that. But I can't say what not to do. What The companies may favor that, and that's all good for them. But I think also that... You're right. It's gonna. Uh, it's co coming more towards going towards at least the competition industry is kind of going towards more of this internet um, subscription base where I can Stream. study your yeah study your videos, make adjustments on it, etc. Um, even YouTube. I don't. I have this thing right. I was watching um, this documentary about this the drug dealers and all this stuff out there. It's a, uh, it's a show. It's like called Dope or whatever. And <laughs> and it's it's funny to hear this, these gangsters going. You can't shoot it like this. You got to keep your shoulders straight and, you know, and they're talking about some of the mechanics. And I'm like, these jackasses are getting this from Instagram. I mean, not Instagram, but YouTube. They're learning, they're learning this. And that sucks for the guys that are on the blue and the good side because now they're they got to fight off these. Guys, yeah, right? but that's but that's going to Jay, that's going to happen no matter what. Like, you know, you look at like the amount of jujitsu schools popping yeah. up. Yeah. Guys are getting trained. I mean, I, I mean, I can honestly tell you, you know, you go into any mixed martial arts school, there's going to be a nefarious character or two in sure. there. Um, I'm not saying guys are progressing to black belt level in certain things. You know what I mean? But they're yeah. they're learning enough. And that's why 
and I know you train law enforcement. That's why one of the calls to action to law enforcement, to mill guys, the bar is being raised. Yeah. You definitely have to get out there. I mean, if the gap for civilian to milio training was this big before, it's getting enormously big because the, the amount of access you have Correct. to things. Correct. So I, I think that that's a foregone conclusion. But coming back to social media, I just think Instagram bets on how far somebody's willing to swipe down. And I think that's a bad bet. You know better than I do. You deal yeah. with that stuff. I mean, as far as as far as I go, I just seem to believe that streaming and, and going in that direction, which leads me to the next thing. When will we get the JJ Ricasa reality TV show streaming on YouTube? <laughs> and, and, do, and do you have plans to put more out there? Because I see a lot of guys doing it. Um, is there a plan to give people a little bit more on YouTube? I, the, the, the thing there is time, right? If I do something else, that something else has to give. So right. one of the things that I'm traveling so much right now, it's going to be hard to capture me down for footage and, and video content. But um, yeah, so I think this this whole new deal that I'm doing working with is going to allow me to train a little bit more and stay home a little bit more and then be able to put out more, more training content. Um, I think that's... Then, then I'll have some time to do some sort of video. Because tutorial. I think what would be a cool video would be like JJ travels to like a nationals or to like a big comp, and you literally, you know, you do something where it's like a ten part series where it's, you know, every, you know, you just have someone follow you around with a camera and then yeah. cut it up and give people some insight into into your process into how you do things. There was actually an I've gotten an offer within the last six months, uh, two different. Not, I don't know if it's film company or whatever if they have something, but Production. they were gonna. Production, yeah, something like that, where they're gonna f follow me in terms of my training, um, even come in, almost uh, come into uh, my house uh, when I wake up or something like that, and then show your prep, show me in terms of my going, my daily life, and uh, leading up to this national, and then what I do leading up to that point, and I started thinking, going, I was like, man, I don't, I don't know if I really want to show that because. It shows how how little time I have to actually prep, and it might make everyone else feel a little bit more comfortable. I, I think more you controlling the editing would be better than bringing a production company in because I, I just believe, like, I look at, like, the New England Patriots. They won't allow certain, yeah. anything to be filmed, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's a reason for that because they have a process and they have a way they go about things. They don't want to put some of the formula out there. Yeah. Um, I think you would have to control the process, like whether it's you hire a video guy for a week and you do the cut and you post it on your, your YouTube and you build it out that way. But I, I just think, I, I just look at the lay of the land and I just see it more and more. As phones improve and the technology improves, I, I just don't see people wanting to do this with their thumb and swipe. And I just see Instagram as something that people can't monetize. Now, the reason I harp on it is because our industry has been so dependent on it for so long. Everything's well, like following and... You know, oh, you know, this this person, they're big on Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. That's all you hear in the gun industry. In other industries, you don't hear that. I do a lot of research into other companies, more broader based. And I was looking like, like you look at like Oprah. I like to think she's yeah. pretty smart about entertainment, right? Yeah. She has something like 5 million subscribers on YouTube, and she's building out that Harpo, um, Oprah, that own network huge to be like a channel and the same thing with ESPN and so and I like to th think these people know more than me yeah, you, you know yeah. what I mean they know something they're building out YouTube as if it's like you're tuning into programming TV yeah. you're tuning into yeah. TV and they're building out like a channel and that's just where I see it going Jay like that's where like we talk a lot about competitive shooting and how it's never been able to make it to the big screen so to speak mm -hmm. I think it can get there it just has to look at that platform as the platform to go to because that's a better medium for them agreed absolutely agree with that and i look at companies like glock i did a ton of research into this i look at glock i look at hk i look at um sig and i look at different brands and i see them with these very large followings on ig but very small followings on youtube and i say to myself um why are you going to fight a war on a front you already lost fight the war on a better front and I know that that's something you see, and it's something I've talked about with a, with a lot of folks. Shane and I had actually a really deep conversation about it in terms of Glock and, and looking at them building out something. I just think that's the place to go. Yeah, I think you're. I think there's absolutely um, a point there that you're making. Mm. I mean, John, we, we have, have this conversation, conversation you know, every, yeah. every, every, almost every day. Well, it's day. a media department, for I God's mean, sakes. Of course yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, every single day we have that conversation about, about – you know how everybody's consuming the content now especially on youtube 
And it's just amazing the way it's just rapidly evolved into what it is now because now you can just go on there and find content you're interested in and just watch the hell out of it, yeah. you know, for hours on end versus you going home and watching the same old TV show or binge watching on Netflix the same old TV show you've been watching for two weeks now. Whereas it's like, okay, you know, I feel like watching stuff about guns right now or, hey, I feel like watching stuff about training right now. It's just a, an easy transition. It just it gives you what you totally. want. Totally. And let me ask you, like, this leads me to this, Jay. Yeah. How do we, so pro shooting has always suffered. It's Achilles heel is getting people to tune in. Because you go to the matches, there's not spectators. There's a few family members maybe. So if, you, I know you're, you, you talk to Max, you talk to Shane. How do we save pro shooting from a media standpoint? There's a couple of things that has to change. Um, I think being the target and stuff like that, there's a couple of guys out there doing something different, meaning the target has to be more reactive. Uh, for the crowd to understand what we're shooting at because a lot of times when we're shooting at paper It just looks like what you're doing in Instagram. You can shoot as fast as you can. No one knows you're hitting right mm -hmm. And it's more so much more easier and pleasurable to watch when you someone is shooting a steel target um, So something along those lines needs to happen and and, and some and really a lot of it's just getting someone to follow um, When you're emotionally invested on a person, it's easier to follow and cheer for as opposed to um, not knowing the person, just kind of go, oh yeah, I kind of like that dude. Oh, I don't know. Oh, he's good. And, you know, you don't know anything about that person. So a little bit more personal. Humanizing it. Yeah, and I think that was a lot of the the reason why Top Shot died off because every season there was a new set of ten that everyone needed to get emotionally invested on to to cheer for or hate. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, if you just stuck with the same group of people, it, it might have been weird or whatever. But I don't know the format would have taken up with that. But they would have been people to follow and they would have expected. And that was a cool thing about them bringing back uh, all stars because then they were like, all right, here we go. We got people that are familiar with some of the folks already. See, I have a, I have a theory. If IDPA or IPSC were smart, if their marketing was smart and they hired somebody worth their salt to run it, this is what I would do. I would broadcast this stuff on YouTube or um, other streaming networks because there's, there's uh, Apple, then there's Amazon and all these other places. And you remember how hockey had, when you passed the puck, it lit up yeah. and it went across the thing? Come up with some technology where you're able to follow the bullet to the target. When it's the target, it like, you know, kind of like a, 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 an it's effect. It's a ton of money. <laughs> it's a ton of money. But listen to me. We landed on the moon and there's aliens that walk amongst us, right? So we're capable of these things. So it can be done. Anything can be done. Sure. So you're able to track it in some way to where you're, you're a part of it and, it and the point system tallies real time and you're able to see it play out. Yeah. If you're able to do that and follow along a match, okay, and along the way there's interviews and you know whatever, it's kind of like you just have to come up with a format to be invested in it like any other sport and the score is really the most important Correct. thing. And they say like there's a lot of theories, you know, because in the old days of football and everything else, they, they, the score, getting the score to pop up was like a big deal. Now it's up all the time. And following the scoring is the biggest challenge, in my opinion. Yeah. So if you have a system that does that and you have the ability to do that, and what does that cost you at the end of the day? Uh, a camera crew, a qualified camera crew editing team, and you're able to put it up. But I think what we're going through in the firearms business is really interesting right now. We're seeing, and I know you go around the booths and I know you see it, we're seeing a lot of the old guard start to leave those 50 60 70 something start to start to slowly leave the industry and as the younger crop comes up because i've had these conversations with shane all these ideas having a, like a like a show that broadcasts on there called like shoot house for example that like you get to follow some of the competitive shooters and things like that having these things getting these deeper inside looks almost like um real world road rules i mean yeah. that shit's 30 years old yeah but we still haven't realized like that's the place to go i think that would bring it back to the forefront or at least make it more publicized. Yeah, the, the, there's a guy that does it, um, John Scouting. Um, they, yeah, they John, yeah. Bro bro broadcast stuff in Shooting USA. He does a really good job. I just saw they, they covered the, U, uh, the U.S. Limited Nationals, and I was like, man, that's kind of cool. And it, it was even cooler because it was me that won it. But it was cool that the way they edited it and the way they showed some sort of drama behind it. Oh, yeah. And, the chase behind it and all that stuff, you know. And, and Johnny's cool. like a one-man band. He, it seems like it, right? Yeah, it's, he's it's, crazy. He's got like one or two people and that's it. Yeah, I love him. He's got like the mutton chop sideburns. Yeah, 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 he's he's awesome. Johnny's a hot shit. So you know, it's it's I I just think that's always been a thorn in pro shooting side. They're yeah. not able to get the story out there, and that's what kind of hurts it the most. Because 
you know, you want to follow along. Ideally, we want to follow the competitors. And I've become emotionally, inv- I'm emotionally invested in all you guys. You know, I mean, I want to see because you want to see that. You know, it's fun to watch. I like, I'd love to see some of the head to head. But I think that that's just getting lost in the sauce because they can't figure out the formula. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's my opinion. And um, it's got guns. So it's, yeah. it's hard to do networks. And like I said, I think YouTube may be the way to go for that because it's a little bit more acceptable. But I, I think YouTube starting even at one point ban anything guns. I think you I think they're all cracking down on quote unquote gun sales, but I think what they have to come up with and we have the right administration to it is similar to like cigarettes. It has to be something where it's like, look, we can't advertise in this or that platform or we can't we can't sell, right? Mm-hmm. But we can still do a X, Y, or Z. I mean, I don't know. It's at the end of the day, it's it starts to get a little out of my, I guess, out of my pay grade in terms of like I'm not a bureaucrat and I don't know how to weave that that message. But I mean, people still want to follow it as a sport, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I just think that that's the way to go. But it's always been a thorn in competitive shooting side. Um, I'm glad you know we we came up with a plan on how to save it though here today. <laughs> We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. So. As we kind of get into it, and I know we're going to be running up against time, right, Rory? We're kind of almost an hour in. I want to kind of pull up Magnus Shooting Sports. I want to I want to plug, you know, JJ's shop and, and everybody in there. I know you have it up on the screen. Tell us about the shop and kind of what's going on in there and what you're going to be uh, uh, pushing and what's going on in there. Uh, basically, um, it's it's it. The shop is it's about three years old now. Uh, it's pretty cool to to know. I remember really. the grand opening. Golly, it's been, uh, so long ago now. Um, it seems so long ago. It's still a baby. Um, it's still in, in its infancy. Uh, we're not as growing as fast as I want it to, but there, there's a lot of things involved. In you mean you can't get guns. rich selling guns? Golly, there's <laughs> there's so much more to just selling guns. There's so much paperwork and so much work, right? And I have, I'm glad I'm lucky that I have a good team with me there um, that supports it while I'm, I'm doing my thing, traveling and all that stuff. But anyway, we do a lot of gunsmithing, and we're going to be one of the um, first, actually, Beretta Performance Centers, uh, where we're going to be able to tweak some of the guns uh, that's going to come in and all these other things. Um, yeah, that, and the, the issue is also the website. I used to be the one doing all the, um, doing the, the updates and all that stuff, and then now um, – I've handed it to somebody else, so it's very hard to keep up with everything. I used to take the pictures; those pictures were all mine, edit them, and all that stuff. It's just crazy, the whole programming and all that stuff. I just, you know, like you said, once you do other things, other things start to fade out. JJ Ricazzo web programming. I, I was a networker at one point. I was a programmer at one point. See, yeah. see, <laughs> I was a hustler for one. <laughs> so there's there's the website, guys. To everyone on on YouTube checking it out. He's got all the high end stuff. He's got everything cool there. Super exciting place. Um, one of the better gun shops I've ever been into. Keeps He keeps it a little boutique which I like. It's it's yeah. fun. Uh, he has a few loiterers in there renting space and, <laughs> and hanging out. Um, so if you get down there, he's got a lot of cool custom stuff. And he, he really um, does a great job with his team. They're super nice. Whenever I walk in there, and I know I haven't bumped into you yet in there, <laughs> they're, they, you know, they're so kind. They come out. They'll say hello to you. They're, they're, they're dying to sell you something, so go ahead and stop by. They're right in uh, in Vegas, so super cool gun shop right around the corner. And he does sell some of his own stuff. Yeah. Try to get into that. So you might be able to be as good as JJ. <laughs> it helps. It helps, yeah. I mean, it's like having, you know, it's like having Jordans on, you know. You might be able to jump into jump basketball. T- <laughs> Gosh. But uh, when you typically uh, sell one of your guns that you shot in a match or you use personally, do you mark it up? No. I actually mostly. You should be charging a premium. I've, I've got an offer. The biggest offer I've ever gotten was one of the Razor Cats built after me. Um, that was modeled. That was my name, whatever. Razor is my name. Someone gave me that a long time ago, and then it's kind of stuck throughout the years. And so Limcat came up with the Razor Cat. And that's like one of the most sold guns in, in, in custom guns, at least. And, and that was the one that came on History Channel and all that stuff. I'm so. almost convinced I could get that gun and shoot good. Yeah, for sure. It, it shoots for you. It, it doesn't shoot until it's a perfect shot. But Rory anyway. might even be able to shoot good with that gun. <laughs> But um, that gun's like 6,200, right? And then the original gun, uh, original initial uh, design, 2005, 2004, whatever, was like 3,500, 3,000. And then the offer on that gun currently was 9,600. That was the highest I ever got for my gun. I never sold it. Um, I actually give my guns out away a lot, um, mostly to juniors or upcoming or struggling shooter that, that could help 
or would do better if he got an opportunity to shoot one of these guns. Yeah, so I kind of actually do that quite a bit. Now that I say that, people are gonna get message me like crazy. But I know I, 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 I was choose. gonna I was gonna ask you that you probably get crazy messages of people being like, "Hey, can I get like a free trigger? Or can you do <laughs> you know you know you know what I mean? Like that's oh, or can I get like an hour's worth of?" And you told me something once. You were like, when you first started offering lessons and stuff, and you were a world champion at this point. Yeah, you were like, yeah, I was like charging like fifty bucks, and we were like, I remember Tony now like, what the fuck? You were charging very little in the beginning, weren't you? Yeah, it was it was one of those things that I just love doing it, and then the only reason why I charge the way I charge now is because it takes me time. My it's family. the time, yeah. yeah. It's the it's the I it's the time and the it. level of expertise. And, and if you want to work with a subject matter expert, you're gonna pay. I mean, that's sure. that's the end of the day. Sure. Um, but yeah, you were charging like crazy low rates. You were like, yeah, buy me a I sandwich, do, give me I, Subway. And we're I going. love love doing. It. I love teaching. I've been teaching since 2002, right after 9/11, and it's been. I, I don't know. It's some. There's a there's a sense of love in teaching and just shooting in general. So I would do it for free if it didn't take me away from my. Family. Who are you training now that you can talk about? Um, I could say uh, I could tell you this. I am training the army, the special operations uh, community. Um, training some of the Navy SEALs, training some of the security forces, training some of the Marines, training a lot of law enforcement, some of the JTTF task force and stuff like that. SWATs. Um, Really all, any and all of them now, I've been getting hit up left and right. And mm. sometimes, depending, sometimes it could be a specific group that I'm teaching or, or whatever. But they bring me in and it's kind of blows me away because sometimes I get to stand in front of some of these folks. And I'm like, these are the, the real guys out there that are, I consider heroes, right? They're mm. give, keeping us safe out here at home. And um, I get to sit there and teach these guys, and I'm like, I'm just a third world country boy that grew up in <laughs> in the Philippines, and just somehow. Oh my shooting. god! You know what I mean? Like it doesn't make sense to me sometimes, but yeah, that, I, it's 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 always a humbling honor. Like I'm supposed this week, I'm supposed to be with the Marines, but they had to they had other things that came up that had to get canceled. So it was one of those things. Those that's a specific group that literally trains um, the, the the recon guys. Considering you brought the Philippines into it, I've been to the back of your shop. It's almost like you got kind of a makeshift Filipino sweatshop in there. I saw some of the some of the, the stuff. Um, I, I've heard rumors of, of when the, the family comes in, they're, they're working back there. How uh, <laughs> There's some production going on back there. No, that's just the reloading room. No, you guys are all still super close. You're close with your family. How, yeah. how, how fun is it to go back to the Philippines? I know you go back for competing. You've gone back a yeah, few times. How, how awesome is that? Um, it's awesome. I, uh, it, it's a different feel now. When I was growing up there, no one knew me. I was a kid and, um, from the province. You, they called it. Right? Yeah, you got to be like a rock star. There. I wouldn't who, say that. Is it? Is it? It's not Manny Pacquiao's Pacquiao, from there, yeah, right? It's totally uh, different. He's yeah. like a deity. You got to. Yeah. You got to be like. <laughs> he's totally. He's a different level. No one's at that level. It's like the size of Florida, but JJ's <laughs> a prince there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, now I go back and it, it's it's cool to see the. They carry you off the plane. <laughs> they throw. They throw. It's like uh, like you're from Zamunda. It's like coming to America. They throw flowers. Flowers on a walk when yeah. you walk, and they bathe I you. I stop walking. <laughs> when there's no more red carpet yet. Yeah, no, but no, how no. is it going back? I mean, do you get to meet like uh, like the governor? Is it they have like a governor or something? Yeah, like yeah, that? yeah. You get to meet some of the higher end guys. Um, I call it. I, I don't know if there's a better word for that. But yeah, you get to meet the important people. Yeah. Um, you get to meet and greet them. Uh, you get to rub shoulders or elbows with these some of these guys. It's pretty cool. Totally different. Um, yeah, all, all that opportunity came about because of shooting. Because it's the love. Of oh no, sport. it's awesome, and they Crazy. and they and they're super proud. You know, that's yeah. one thing they're proud Correct. of of their U.S. champions, of the Correct. people that come to the United States. Because as much as I am a U.S. citizen, they still consider me as a Filipino born born and raised. Yeah, know? and where does the Philippines sit? It's not a obviously. I know it's not a state. It's a territory, right? Of the United States, something like that. Is it? No, is it? Wasn't it? Who went? Th we need like Doctor Dave for an answer on this. <laughs> What are the Philippines? They're their own uh, deal, right? It's, yeah. But it was who it was, went? MacArthur went there. It was yeah, somebody went yeah. there. He came back. He he went there, left, and came back, and that's why we love MacArthur, Jenny MacArthur. Yeah. So they're, they're where find the Philippines, Rory. We got to find them on the map. All right. So we're occupied by them. They're occupied Portuguese, by who? Portuguese. We were occupied by the Japanese, and then the U U.S. and the Americas gave us um, our liber um, our freedom, basically. So when you go, us from them. it's a cool place to go, though. Absolutely, that Cebu, that, that little speck right there in the middle, is actually where I was born and raised. That's where I lived 13 years of my life. Before New Jersey. Before New Jersey, correct. Very small, and that's an island, and where you, uh, when you go to the beach, you can pick green water, blue water, 
White sand, so, what, sugar sand, black sand. So when you were there, were you raised like in a loincloth? This is where the modeling started. Like it's like J- baby JJ in a like a loincloth. And when you went to school, you had like barely a pencil. So and yeah, no shoes. I was not. Uh, well, we were. We were. We didn't. You know, we were lower middle class if we can even consider that. So we didn't have much um, when we were growing up. And so yeah, I didn't. I had. I, I look back at this. I had recyclable reusable diapers when I was Every, a kid and that was all I really had. <laughs> I don't I don't uh I don't I don't know. You know, it's it's crazy coming from that to now this here and the transition and just everything you go through cuz you were there till you were 13. It has yeah. to be kind of crazy when you travel the world you get to stay at nice hotels. I mean, how are you adapting to civilization? It's um it's really weird. Like I said, I, 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 when I stand in front of some of those guys in the military, I'm like, what am I doing here, right? Because yeah. I, I know where I came from. And then now uh, I went back one time, um, and, and I realized I've gotten a lot softer than what I used to be. But uh, I Well, I imagine back wearing <laughs> reusable diapers no. and <laughs> shitting in your hand. Yeah, now I can just throw them away. Yeah, now you can just throw them <laughs> Shit in my pants, got to go. Forget <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> Done with the gun, you throw it in the Reload, bucket. Reload, yeah. So, so now it's uh, it's one of those things that um, my dad couldn't. So, right, here's the start, right? I had, my dad had 1911, silver, and we had to turn that into a um, competition gun and started out with just single stack iron sights. And then it turned it into an open gun with a compensator. And then we put scope on it, right? We built one gun into whatever it was and became. Now I have multiple guns. Access guns to everything. $7,000 guns, yeah. But you know, it's it's amazing. It's a wild ride. It, it has been. And I went back to the Philippines one time and went to go shower up my uncle's place. And it's a nice place, but I went to go shower. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck is this one knob? I was like, where's the hot water? Sorry, uncle. Get he, some hot water. He looked at me. He goes, what do you mean hot water? I'm like, well, how do I get hot water? He's like, there's no hot water here, bro. It's and, hot. And, and he slapped you in. around the house and said, and remember yeah, your roots. He choked me <laughs> out. Remember your roots. <laughs> I woke up in the cold water. I'm like, oh, my God. I guess this is how it's He waterboarded be. you <laughs> <laughs> to set you Left straight. Me scoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that is wild, though, because people, you know, say, oh, I never forget where I came from. You get reminded. No, I do. Yeah. When you go back, or when, or when they come out here and they're working in the back with like no <laughs> shirts on, and, you know, no. But no, the Philippines. I mean, I've heard great things. It's an awesome place, and uh, you know, you being from there and representing them, it's like you and Pacquiao. So you know, if you ever reach Pacquiao level and you become like a deity, is there any way like you can anoint me or can I be knighted? <laughs> I don't know if that. I'd, I'd like be to be knighted. knighted can I be like a high knight from the Philippines? <laughs> but that's awesome, man. I, I love it and I love hearing those stories because I feel like here in the United States we've lost a little bit of that romance of, you know, kind of being that like we have so much we we almost take for granted our own champions. Is that a better way to put it? You know what I mean? And there's always something around it. Um I think that's a shame. I, or I, become a champion and drop the flag on the ground. That's true. That's so it's true. Disrespectful. Yeah. Goes both ways, right? It goes both ways. How do you know? How does that rub you with, like, the NFL and the stuff like that? You know, is it just are we taking for granted our, our patriotism? I I take it personally. I'm an immigrant, and we came here because of the opportunities that it afforded us. And uh, I feel like I can live the life I live now, um, afford the things that I can afford now, live a great life. Um, be, uh, you know, My dad always believed that if we worked as hard as we could, even as, if we're poor here in America, we can essentially get what the rich man can get bec- as long as we work hard. And we just got to work harder. And then and now I'm, uh, I'm able to afford these opportunities where I never would have been, never even the wildest dream. And my dad and I constantly talk about it. And then and the America provided that for us, right? So when I see the flag get disrespected, I absolutely get heated. I keep my mouth shut on it a lot of times. Um, I speak out to my wife and let them know uh, how I feel about it, but I don't. I don't like talking politics about anyone. But you could tell. Yeah, I'm like right now. I'm heated talking about it just because of the fact that um, what U.S. and America gave me is that I am. It's you know I, I serve the country in, in the federal law enforcement government world, but it's just one of those things that. Um, it pisses me off to see the disrespect on the flag. People are dying for that to keep us our freedom. And, and here they are freaking disrespecting it, taking a freaking knee and do whatever. Do whatever you got to do. Just freaking, if you don't like it here, like Trump said, get the hell out. <laughs> I don't think, you know, it, I don't think it's a political thing, JJ, so much as it is a sociological issue. I think I think part of what we were talking about earlier, that, that softening of people not losing or people not feeling like they've lost or suffered or gone through something, I feel like it's an easy jump. Well, yeah. I feel well. I feel disrespected. I feel like I didn't win, 
and they gravitate towards that, well, I'm going to take a knee or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And they really never understood what it was to go without or to not have. And you do. You, you know, so a guy I, a guy I worked with, Special Force, um, he was an SF, a former SF guy, Tim Schaefer. He's a good dude. I worked with him hand in hand. We were instructors together. He used to, he, has a, he had a great analogy. He goes, you know, most of these guys out there, he goes, they're just looking for the next popular thing. He's like, they're like this empty bottle in the ocean waiting for the next big wave to come. And they're just riding that wave. And then, oh, there's another big wave riding that wave. Oh, there's another big wave. And this is this thing right now. This is the popular thing. They, they don't have anything to stand for. So they hold on to what's popular and it makes them what relevant, I guess, quote unquote. And it just, it's sad, but it's the reality right now because you see it in social media. I hate it because it's getting played up. And then I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think historically you're always going to find people that are going to hang on to what they feel got them to the prom. You know what I mean? And they're going to they're going to hold on to it. You you know, I always say um, it's it's unfortunate because they don't open their mind to kind of see the world at a thousand feet and analyze every issue and look at everything and kind of have an opinion. Like you said, if you feel you have to kneel, if you feel you've been disrespected or you feel you need to raise awareness to a cause or an issue. I don't think anybody will fault you for that. I think it's the the time in and time out the disrespect that people people put on things, and then people get behind issues that really don't have any business getting behind the issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's kind of where it falls a little bit on on deaf ears over time. But I think you know you're absolutely correct. I think it's like an empty bottle floating in the ocean, waiting for that next big wave. And I think you know a lot of people. We always we talk about this a lot in, in this industry too. It's kind of like if a, if the Instagram switch went off, how many people would be like jump off a building? You know what I mean? Like oh, you know I lost my platform. And I think I, I think like you have to sift through. It's like it is like an ocean. So many people are given a platform that probably shouldn't even have one. Yeah. And that's part of it, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I've always said it. We idolize false gods for the wrong reasons. And <laughs> we look at people and we don't really understand where they're coming from. But the loudest voice gets to create the narrative. And that's how it's always been in the news. And I think Trump's done a good job kind of shining a light and saying, don't believe everything you hear. Yeah. It's not always accurate. Um, there's a lot of fake news out there. There's a lot of people that do the disinformation thing. There's a lot of bullshit put out there. And people put it out there, and I think this was something that was put out there, and I think people people run with it. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll disrespect the country. And, yeah. you know, that's something we'll grab onto. And we'll be the loudest voice in the room. It's, you know, it's unfortunate and it's super... It, it bothers me at, uh, a ton because it's, it's a social issue to me. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, again, I don't want to get political, and I usually, I don't, but it's definitely a social issue in my opinion. So, how do we fix it? You got bigger, better people to do that, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, vote. I, vote. vote. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I definitely it. think Trump's a step in the right direction of that. Like you said, he said, you know, you don't like it, get out. Yeah. No. So, uh, we got to wrap because you got to go. What is it? We're into Jesus. We're already into Rory. How long are we? An hour and ten minutes. Golly. Yeah, about an hour and ten minutes. Jeez. Where does the time go? <laughs> it's like, well, you I know. mean, when you're talking about aliens and you know, yeah. stuff, you <laughs> just, I mean, did we cover everything? Side. Did we hit everything? So yeah. a few things. Um, JJ, we t- could have a couple questions though. You know. Yeah, I'll go ahead if you have any. So uh, Daryl wanted to know uh, specifically for JJ if he had any hobbies outside of uh, oh, that's a good one. I was going to ask family. You know. Hobbies. Yeah. What do you do that nobody sees? You go to the movies. You play. Oh, you play no. cards. You play uh, cards. Poker. You get a card game going. Yeah, poker. Once in a while. Yeah. Um, I notice you have a card game. I catch it on some of the stories. Yeah. <laughs> JJ has Here this like go. underground card game. <laughs> it, it could be a legal game. It could be it Filipino could be like, gaming. Yeah. It's Pow Guy. Hey, keep it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the commissioner's watching. <laughs> He's playing baccarat in the house. Um, no, it just, I, I, just, I, I used to have a lot of hobbies, not anymore. Um, I've literally had to dial it down. I used to love snowboarding, I used to love jujitsu. I, I used to love just training in general. Um, uh, I had to get rid of a lot of those things, I, and it's sad because, um, you know, the, 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 every, the skin's getting soft. It's been a while since I've even rolled. I roll here and there depending on where I go and depending if I have a friend there. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's basically it. I like to get back into it. You um, can come train with me. You're just not in my weight class. Y- no. You can't go so, roll with John. He'll just touch your butt. No, that's it. Yeah, and he'll that. look at me in the eye the whole time. He'll stare at me the whole time. <laughs> I, I have a hard time finding fellow 240s to roll with, but uh, you'd, you'd be fine with me. I'm a dead player. Anyway. I don't know. I don't know. Just, I'm not that good to roll around with the bigger person. How long did you train? 2008 to 2012, 13, something like that. Four or five years. Yeah. Yeah. 
Blue belt? No, I never got belted. I was always, uh, I bounced around. I went from Henzo Gracie, Jamal Jackson, a couple other guys, and then here, never really trained here. So I've been here for four or five years. Time freaking flies. Yeah, I was SPG to straight, uh, S- S- SPG to 10th Planet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so now you're in 10th Planet. Now I'm a 10th yeah. Planet guy. I'm a white stripe. <laughs> you're a white one? Black, black one stripe. He's, he's the white a black one stripe. Whatever nin, that is. Nin, ninja belt. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's hard to fit. You know, that's what I explain to people. Like, I know Dave's been in Roar YouTube and trying to get me to go to archery, and I haven't bit that apple yet because I'm just, you don't have the time. Yeah. It's just, you know, it, and guys like, you know, I don't say guys like us to put me on the list, but I say, like, you want to go head first into something and really do it, yeah. and it's, it's hard to just casually add what I say, and you know how jujitsu goes, it's it's a three or four day a week commitment. You yeah, can't just yeah. show up on Sundays at Absolutely. open mat and just roll. If you can do more than that, I, man, we used to do every freaking day. Yeah, I mean, I try to do my commitments usually about three to four days a week. Yeah, that's you know, good. with weights. Yeah, you know what I mean? So good. I'm doing weights in the morning at 4 a.m. That's your cardio, dude. Yeah, and that's yeah. my cardio. And we all hate cardio, so yeah. that fits in. But yeah, I mean, there's so Where's many. Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> With him, I can't even. I can't even take him anymore yeah. with the with the videos and the bullshit. <laughs> you know, he called me today. He's out of control. I mean, now he's doing the boxing and everything else regularly, and now he's doing jujitsu a lot because that's good for him. Yeah, he needs it. He's not flexible. Oh, he's not flexible. The fuck no. Nah, if you not with all that strength. I don't care what he says, and I don't care if he listens to this. He's not that flexible. I challenge him. Tony, I challenge you to you a flex. Do a, you need to set up a sit and reach around uh, here and I see know. how good he is at the sit and oh, reach. Oh, he, he's, he's, you know, he just never stops. He's crazy. Yeah, he doesn't. But uh, is now let me ask you this before we cut you loose. You know, speaking of Tony and, and guys, you know, who do you look up to out there, not just in the shooting world, but what pages do you follow that you're like, damn, I really like how that guy's doing it or that gal? It, you know, I follow a lot of the um, sprint athletes, uh, the sprinters. The ultra marathon people are no. sprinters. Sprinters? <laughs> sprinters. Um, I follow um, Johan Blake. I, follow, I used to follow Usain Bolt, uh, but he's not as active anymore. Um, I follow a lot of these coaches out there. Um, and one of the guys that I recently started following really is um, the guy Gary V. Yeah, he's, he's he's pretty raw in some of his stuff. And it's just cool to see his perspective. I like Gary, you know, coach. yeah. I like his message. I'll tell you the only issue I have with Gary Vee, and it's, you know, I talk about this a lot with a lot of guys. The only issue I have is he'll look at, like, a 15-year-old person, and he'll be like, just move out of your house. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, he, he sometimes, like, I think, like, you know, this he's a, he's a super tremendous story. He went from selling wine to this to that, and I love his message. I'm, act, I'm a fan. I just think sometimes when he gets in front of people, he'll be like, yeah, you know, sometimes you just got to leave your parents and you just got to go on your own. And like, <laughs> I'm like, Gary, you worked with your dad till you were like 30. <laughs> selling one. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't know sometimes like if, if it's just the public speaker, Gary, but he's a social media guru. He's oh, yeah, doing yeah, a lot yeah. of cool stuff. Crazy. And I cite a lot of his stuff. I love his work. But I also think somewhere along the way that Tony Robbins takes effect where it all sure. becomes very high energy and yeah. it's very like... Yeah. You know, you can see him when he speaks. It's like, yeah. you're like, God, I gotta keep up with him. Let's He's go. super intense, dude. And I'd love to. I've never met him, and you know, I've met a fucking ton of people. I just, I've never got around to meet him. I know people that have. I'd love to see kind of what he's like on a personal level, but I do like his his message about media. He he's a big proponent of streaming. Yeah, huge yeah. proponent of that. But uh, he he's a good one. Who else? Of course, Manny Pacquiao. I mean, I'd love uh, gotten a passing meeting with him, but yeah, he's his story is unbelievable from where he was to where he's at now. Um, he, he he makes a huge impact. So he's still fighting. Yeah, yeah, he's got to fight this weekend. Yeah, Saturday. it's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, he's now you don't my age because like you have that Filipino deal. You don't uh, if he fights here, he's not like, hey, JJ, come out. No, we don't know it's each other that <laughs> like that. I it do get invited. Be. Like, there's something like, hey. Um, they're in the Pacquiao group. And like, hey, dude, um, come. We got in the circle. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm like, all right. I just, I'd rather watch it on TV. Yeah. No. No. I, I hear you loud and clear. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. I can't. You know. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, those guys are great role models. And then the sprinters are just kind of a cool thing. I'm actually gonna probably have to go follow a sprinter or two. But um, yeah, the training is super, super important, and I can see how all those guys influence you and affect you. Yeah. I mean, no doubt in your training. Um, Anybody else out there that kind of nobody would think of? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Um, most I'm pretty boring, really. I don't have much time to scan a lot, so I I 
follow like weird things like creepy um grim I follow scare. weird I follow weird medical pages. Yeah, I have my neuro my neuro neuro whatever surgeon. <laughs> I follow him. He does brain surgery on any <laughs> post it weird, like yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's i love that yeah. shit like some the weird, weird i follow stuff. it's like meta medica metapedia it's like a page where they show like a broken leg and they show it yeah. like i'll show it to you it's crazy i always send tony the clips it'll be like four broken fingers or like this guy ran his arm through a sawzall it's like crazy stuff um not that i'm not gruesome but i follow more like the scary stuff yeah i gotta i gotta get on your page but um that's awesome so one last question. Where haven't you gone that you want to go? Oh, we are talking about it this weekend. Um, I would love to go to Fiji. Take my wife and my family there one day. It's expensive to go there. It is. What's uh, a vacation of Fiji, Rory? I think it was like 9000 We were looking at $9,000 a night. For to get like one of those cabanas in the blue ocean? In the, in the ocean, yeah. And then it's JJ right. again in the loincloth. That's it. Come, but you know, I would not even have a loincloth on that Nothing. One. Just <laughs> JJ comes out, <laughs> it's not even dives cold. in the ocean, <laughs> flip. right into a shark's mouth. So... <laughs> So Fiji, uh, yeah. yeah, that 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 would be. I'd, take, I'd love to get like just get away. Fiji, Fiji's on my list too. Yeah, just to get away. One of those huts right above the ocean. That's what right. I'm saying. And you I know. just you know JJ the male model coming like, out of the hut, like disconnect. Nothing but a flower. No phone. Fiji's not the only place you can do that too. Um, Bora Bora has the, the Bora Bora. Bora, Bora, Bora yeah. But I think the reason why Fiji isn't enticing is because it's so expensive. That no, not many people get to go there, so it's very desolate. I guess. It's a My thing town. would be the. Yeah, you gotta take a. You gotta take a boat. Yeah. Out there. Uh, yeah. To get to the smaller islands, so you'll fly out there, and you end up taking like an hour boat. I've yep. looked into it before. Yeah. And or then, you can and, fly um and, one of those landing water type jets. One of those like yeah. Yeah, you can fly a turbo prop in there yeah. too. Um, but uh, Rory's a pilot. He can fly us. Oh shit! He's a pilot. I ain't going to fly anybody that far. <laughs> <laughs> but my concern with that would be the food. Like, I can't get, like, a steak and cheese sub or something. Because I'm fat. You know, I can't, get, I can't get my snacks. I don't know that there's cereal there. I feel like all you eat there is, like, fresh flounder. Oh, God, the cereal. I don't know. Yeah, there would be no cereal. No, there would be no not. cereal. There would be fish, good seafood. There would be good seafood. but That's like the, uh, John, John's on the seafood diet. You know, I, he sees yeah. food and he eats he it. He eats you know? it. That's <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I feel like I couldn't live if I had to have, like, a piece of... A, Plain grouper, like that's that's the, you know what I mean. I would, Everyone has salt. Yeah, I would. <laughs> you be, can dry out salt water, salt water, and you'll get salt. I would be dead though, JJ. I wouldn't have like a pop tart <laughs> or something. You got to bring and pack up your protein. Shots. I would have to pack everything. A freaking Quest bar. I would need. Sure. I would need a case of Quest bars. Yes. So it's been. This has been so much fun. I love having you in here, and and we could go on and on forever. But I know you got to go. I know you have important things to do, and. Um, I can't thank you enough for coming. Thanks for having oh, really. me. Really? No, it's been it's so much fun catching up with you yeah, and shooting sure. the shit. And it's funny how this is how we catch up sometimes. <laughs> but this is the only way. This is this is the forum. Everybody needs yeah. to know. The people have a right to know what the people's champ is doing. <laughs> <laughs> the people people's have a champ. What the, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I backed that up with a title last year. <laughs> you better back it up. So I'm excited to see JJ. Where will you be next and where can people find you? Uh, I'm actually leaving for the Philippines this Saturday. Um, in two days. Shit. Um, and then I come back and I'll be in Miami um, first week of August all the way till middle of August and then I go to Colorado um, about second week uh, third week of August and then I go right to Pennsylvania New Jersey teaching a NYPD group um, uh, in New York and then down I think North Carolina again then back here and then I'm preparing for the nationals in September. And then I go to the Philippines again in um, October, November, something like that. Where can people find you if they want training? Oh, jessica.rakaza at yahoo.com. She's handling all my booking and scheduling. Um, Is there a website? There's no website yet. The website's been a pain in the butt to develop. Um, JJ, you can way. get a website done for like 20 bucks. Yeah, but there's so many moving parts. My <laughs> schedule changes constantly. So just email my wife, and she can handle it. Oh. Give, give that email again. Jessica.Rakaza. And what do you charge for, like, uh, like give the folks an idea. Like, if somebody wants to come out for a session, like, is no, it, I don't 200 do private, bucks an hour? I don't do private sessions anymore. Um, there, there is some guys out there that pay for private sessions, but that's expensive. That's... Um, expensive is relative, I guess, to the person. Some people will pay it, and it's it's whatever. Um, so don't hit them up for private sessions. Yeah. It's got to be a group. But what if somebody puts a group together? A group together, it's... Uh, What's the average ahead? Three or four hundred bucks? Per person, it's averaging about um, three 
Uh, Six hundred dollars per day uh, per for the two days. For two days, okay. Yeah. All right, just give yeah. people an idea. You yeah. know, give them a rough idea. For two days. So you heard it here first. Hit up Jessica and let her know if you can put a group together. Um, JJ's in the Vegas area, but if you fly him out and you uh, treat him like the king that he is, the Philippine king, <laughs> the deity. Um, no, but seriously, you're training everybody, so your yeah. schedule's busy, and you're probably booking out at least three, four months. So don't hit him up like, hey, next Tuesday. No, no, yeah, yeah it's I'm not gonna happen. Too. I think in January I'm booked up till uh, November. Beautiful, so and you'll be at Shot Show. Will be the next probably major show you'll be at. Yeah, and um, hopefully, uh, I'd love. Do you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to get to like if you're around for Olympia, I'd love to kind of steal you yeah. and want to go to. Is that go first by week of September? Yeah, I think I'll still be in the East Coast swing in that. Damn. One. Yeah. Damn. Well, it's been fun. I can't thank you enough for coming by and visiting KVAR and getting a chance to visit the studio. The studio is fucking, you know. It's immaculate. Awesome. I'm yeah. glad you love it. And getting to visit the team, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I can't thank KVAR enough. Make sure you visit KVAR.com. Go visit www.kvar.com and go check it out. And uh, we're going to have to head down to Magnus at some point yeah. and check out the shop. And sure. I've been in there a million times, but I want to take the team down there and show them. And uh, I look forward to hopefully you carrying our products. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun, especially the Arsenal brand. It would be a lot of fun. And we'll get Marco in here for a follow-up and we'll find out what oh. it's like to work for you. You. you should see, yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. right? Now, you just you should let him run that gun because he can run the trigger like there's nobody. No, oh, absolutely, we will. So thank you, my brother. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, Rory, kick us out. Thank you.